I have often walked, abstracted from the obscure. Nothing quickened my pulse more as much as the promise of plenitude. We're all outsiders, yet we're on the same rock. I yearn for the day when we truly believe how free we really are. Things seem so very different now when I look at them from here. When I stared into your existence, I found meaning in my own. Yet there is no reward or meaning if we no longer have a connection. Without you, I am empty. Yet when I am with you, I want another. When we frame something, do we ever capture it? Memories are a state of mind. The dream never dies. It just takes a different track. For all that we felt is never lost. Because we held it. Once you've had something of joy, it never really ends. As I sat staring into the abyss of my life, I found myself further from the thing that I professed to love. Pouvez-vous m'aider? Pouvez-vous m'aider? Can you help me? Can you? I can only help myself, I mused. Even then I am lost. For as long as I could remember, I'd been singing someone else's song. All the time I believed I was free and flowing, yet in hindsight I was only living and existing. I sat between nowhere and nowhere, trapped between suffocation and isolation. solitude I can stand. It is the pain that sits alongside it that troubles me. The pain not being born of solitude, but of past mistakes. As far as I could see, all relationships operated on the attempts to reconcile the rescuer with the would-be rescuee. Something's missing
I yearn for the quietness of solitude and to be absorbed by the nothingness that surrounds. I often feel fragmented, yet if I chip away at the fragments and reassemble them, can I ever arrive at a truly holistic nirvana? As I sit, I imagine. I remembered when the veneer had begun to crack and my thoughts began to race toward the inner workings. They had been neglected for so long. Was the cracking of the veneer symptomatic of a jam mechanism within, or was it just a sign of my arrival at a different station? The journey had been slow, and all that I had carried to this point had begun to weigh heavy and seem no longer necessary. It was a revelation that came to me that by chance I realized how much I felt that my own archetype had had a disregard for me. I've come to dwell in thoughts of hell Lately I've been lost There is something within us that we may never reach. Should I then be accepting and leave it as it was and will always be? Is there a resignation in my acceptance? New depths take us to other levels of the unknown, so what then? Is it that it should remain unknown, or is this a never-ending journey to total understanding? When I have my dreams of how it should be, I am immediately jolted back into the reality of what it is. We play this game that we both lose. My love is never accepted. What then remains is unwritten or unsaid. I talk of the mystery of love, dear heart. Yet once we expose love to light, are we destroying its very essence, moreover existence? My best ideas are the ones I have when I am doing things other than the task I want to be doing. I should write. Or should I not write? The thoughts, if not written or spoken, then race through my mind. They find levels where they flood my imagination. The thing that I started with then becomes bigger like tissue absorbing water. It then chokes me with despair until I can no longer understand or remember the initial thought I started with. It is then cast into some dark corner of my psyche to resurface in some other realm when I least expect it. and total understanding can never be reached. Maybe it is a plastic utopia made in dreams and expectations of idyllic naivety. Everything changes when we attempt to reproduce a thing or even a thought. It can never be truly identical to the original. If I think of any number of scenes and replay any one of them a thousand times, by the law of probabilities it changes, and it can never give justice to the original feeling. It is gradually eroded and then changed into something insignificant, or normal, or diluted into something else. Is there then reason to think that everything is changing before our eyes and it all renews? That there is a constant flow? And yet human nature attempts to slow or hold on with memories, dreams and expectations. 
What is the weight of our feeling go? If we close our minds, then our eyes begin to follow, not in a dream state, but a waking nightmare, where everything rocks our world and stifles movement. Every little thing becomes bigger or greater than it is, or ever was. My thoughts were now drawn to the plight of elm trees. It is in attempting to prevent the spread of fungi that the tree blocks its own vascular tissue and outgrowths fall to the sides. This attempt in preventing further damage stops nutrients and water from being delivered up the trunk. Eventually the tree dies. Emotions flow and in that flowing they arrive at a natural place. When we attempt to intellectualize them by naming or labeling the process, we are in danger of losing the feeling and consigning everything to the same fate. If we could only start afresh and past times could be forgotten, could we ever create a space between the now and the distant past? Could we ever find our Camelot, or is it just a game we play to wring out our sadness and despair? It then suddenly dawned upon me that I could never be totally free. The things I had chosen to represent freedom had come to lose their meaning within the process. It had become like a multi-track recording. As I began to add more layers, the thing I started with became more unrecognizable as it neared its completion. That completion being a combination of my impatience and perception of its end. As long as we breathe, is there ever really an end? Do things take on a new meaning? or are they just set adrift into a void for discovery and then only return when we ourselves have heightened perception? Further down the river into the unknown with one eye on land and one foot sinking all the time thinking yet being pulled into some new horizon of time and the past carried by us as we try to sift through where we have been, where we are now, and where we are going. Meanwhile we drift, and yet our minds are untrained to stay in the now. Our memories are only snapshots, and yet seem safer than the world is your oyster future bigger picture. Sometimes I think I can no longer ever commit to one thing, and yesterday always looks better in hindsight. We have, in the name of future progress, had the past ripped away, been sold the have it now philosophy, and then been force fed with nostalgia. Everything is tainted. We are sleepwalkers in a waking nightmare. Thinking of my memories, I am melancholic. I can never dissipate the feeling. Melancholy makes some others afraid. How can it be that my sadness makes them afraid? They can only apply sadness from their own experience, yet they still perceive it as all belonging to me.
people are easily satisfied and want to exist within easy reach of an invocation to happiness. They can deal with the bubble it creates. They can become steadfast and resolute, safe and yet blind to everything else. I had you, I lost you, and thus began the yearning. Yet in that yearning I found more of myself. Through that I continued to search for you. My life was opening up inside of me, yet when it came to you, it was on pause. When I look into the light of what never ever may be, I am thrown into the darkest corners of my soul. I sit with my head on my knees and my arms around my shins, pulling everything closer to ease the pain and emptiness that floods me. What is it that you give me that makes existence worthwhile? If I had the answer to that mystery, then maybe life would never phase me to the levels it troubles me now. If I had all the treasures, I would exchange them all. I would sacrifice heart, body and soul. I'd imagine my melancholy lifting too, no longer existing in a haze of hope or unrequited responses. There is an element within us that we have been bound so tightly and that although the loosening up gives us space to fly, the overwhelming fear keeps us in a cocoon. No longer is it fear of failing, it is fear of fear. The needle then is abruptly pulled across the tracks and a hole ripped where the light exposes my darkest reality. How did we become so hijacked? How is it we seem so alienated? It appears that there is a long walk to freedom. At times the path may never look as good as the one that I am on now. It is in my response to actions and reactions that I grow in strength, whilst also being aware that the way of the self-righteous is steeped in tragedy. I wish it was all simple But life by a thread Drowning in my fears and hoping it's all worthwhile The love you wanted to share Is surrounding me in despair oh. oh, if it were all so very simple now I remember feeling how wrong I was and how wrong I had been I had been protecting somebody else from my real self because they themselves had no idea of their real self. Are we so conditioned? Was I so deluded? Why do we carry our histories with us if they keep returning us to a dark place? Whilst we can choose the station where we alight this still does not get us to the destination we are intent upon reaching. There is no direct route to individuation. Music is now incomplete without the visualization. The visualization empty without the music. We need a narrative that bridges the gap.
If I look into the machinery, I see it is only a small part of a bigger system. We have regressed. We are no longer ghosts in the machine. We have become ghosts operating the machinery. There is a freeing up that takes one to a place where one is no longer trying to play by the rules of others. The need for an explanation of my thoughts, words and actions is no longer necessary. I only wish for the people I am connected with to have some understanding. Even then, the necessity is no longer a prerequisite. No longer are we then notes in the margin. We enter the main page, and our story truly begins. We follow in search of hidden pleasures, yet reject the mystery therein. We do this with the hope that all our searching leads to our pre-programmed vision of golden treasures. We avoid enlightenment within. Elucidation never becomes complete. It is easier to accept the world's mysteries than that of the mystery that lies within ourselves. There is no remedy to the malady. Our eyes only want to see good. We are not fully accepting of the insecurity that surrounds. We try to purchase our safety through materialistic means. We are never told in our childhood to mind the gap. This abyss pulls us from the clutches of corporate greed. Yet eventually, we are sucked right back into the machine. The promise of a better tomorrow comes in the form of a packaged commodity that binds us to conformity, stagnation and misery. cycle that surrounds us, which is encircled by nothingness. A cycle of despair, a wheel we can never be fully free from. We live in fear of unacceptance, standing alone and being an individual. Can we ever set ourselves adrift from our memories, histories and conditioning? Where love is overstepped, we enter the experience of the other and begin being ourselves inside someone else's experience. Separation is blurred and we react because we are no longer ourselves. Is to love to be a soulmate's counsellor?
When I become you, I am no longer observing my own genuine responses. Can I be me in the presence of you, even when the subject is me and the words are hurting? Why do they hurt? We seem to always find new levels. Everything comes with new depths. Yet we only uncover these in our most unguarded moments. close off parts of ourselves? Is it that we no longer want to go to those places? The pain being too much to bear? It is no longer easy to redirect our thoughts and ignore the feelings rising up from within or we'll try to push them further underground. We fail to recognize that happiness is fleeting we can be at times surrounded, yet in the next moment suddenly alone. We follow a lone path, hoping others will find something in what we say or do that might bring us together. Eventually, we sink or swim, stay true or follow. that love follows a romantic track and that anything other than the idyllic is not real. If at times I feel that love is a wasted energy, then it is not love I am describing. It is that I feel that the other person has reneged on the deal. When I realize that this is the moment, that this is all there is and may ever be, I am at that moment liberated. The program no longer works. I am ripped away from all that I had known and perceived as normality. So then what is all this for? I see people get old and I do not understand the purpose of anything. If I am awake, it seems we are all trapped in a cycle of despair. The realization of death is the final destination. Whilst it can be a freeing sensation, we are inevitably caught in the midst of anxiety, on a train that moves on a circular track of predictability and forlornness. There is then a feeling that compels me to commit, yet by my commitment it seems that I am returning to sleep, and then the gradual procession towards finality. Is this the erosion of idealism? Or is it that I cannot completely reach you because I have not fully reached myself? There seems to be a realization within me that I am no longer trying to achieve anything, just merely get to where the going takes me. We go full circle, and if we arrive feeling that there is still something missing, then did we ever really take part in our story? We 
you have no inclination of any of this in the moments in between. Life is art, and art is life. Art is in the making and comes from a moment. Our preconceptions no longer equip us for our journeys. We have become weary travellers in our own complacency and failed expectation. We're in the absence of our own essence. Nothing sustains us. songs are the ones I never write. The depth of my despair is never reached. Layer upon layer hidden by a brave yet new false facade. The journey begins with me. All the signposts say nothing. They all point to the same nothingness, the vacuity in between filled with triviality. The Holy Grail is only stumbled upon briefly. It is eclipsed or superseded by other distractions or diversions, so seek and you will not find. Only more turmoil becomes apparent. I came here to break the mould, to step outside of dismal conformity, to aspire to the life that breathes within me, to uncover to the core my very self. Packaged, moulded, shaped, and the emptiness still surrounds, order contained within the malady only inspires me to escape the life I have known. We know nothing, yet we cling to survival in the most mediocre environments. We are truly stagnant in a malaise, no answers therein contained. When you try and define me, you destroy the beauty of the moment. Only the naive are truly happy. <laughs> 